What was the genesis of Bentonville for you? Like, why start a festival like this? You know, I had been doing, uh, I had my research institute for a number of years uh, before that. And, uh, and you know, we were, we were focusing exclusively on on-screen representation and, uh, and our uh, focus was on what kids see first. I mean, that's the reason I wanted to start this whole thing was, that I, I realized when I became a parent, I realized how wildly uh, uh, unequal the genders were in entertainments that made for kids. So I hadn't really worked with uh, the industry as a whole, the, the whole problem of, of uh, gender representation um, in front of and behind the camera in every aspect. And so um, this film festival idea came along and, uh, uh, and I leapt at the chance. I thought it was a great way to expand on what we were already doing and, um, and to show, you know, show movies uh, that are incredibly inclusive, incredibly diverse, reflect the population as it is to show that this is easy, this is normal. You know, we just not asking for something extraordinary to say, hey, do you, do you think maybe the population of the film can reflect uh, the actual population, which is 50% female and wildly diverse? And while we're at it, can the storytellers also be that diverse and the crew and uh, everybody involved in filmmaking? And uh, so that's what we're out to prove here. And we've had uh, some great success. Bentonville has been focused on diversity since like day one, as you said. Do you feel like other film festivals are, are doing a good job following your example, especially recently? Yeah, I, I do, I do. I think, uh, I can't think of any film festival that doesn't have a women's initiative, you know, and diversity initiatives and all that. Um, uh, and so it's, it's very, I mean, look, it's, it's what we want. We want it to be everywhere. So obvious. So, you know, um, completely natural that you would include as much diversity as possible. And, you know, we, we started out wanting to show, look, there's incredible scene, uh, movies uh, that are directed by people of color, starring, uh, you know, women and people of color. Um, and, uh, uh, they can be incredibly commercial. We want to get, you know, we don't want it to be, just be, well, we're going to show little niche movies and won't that be nice uh, that uh, that some uh, people with a, you know, a diversity get to make some small movies. You know, we want to show what's true, which is that the more diversity uh, in a movie, the more money it makes. And, you know, some of these Marvel movies have, have proven that, um, uh, to a tremendous extent. And uh, so we love having everybody um, come along with us on this journey. I mean, we, we go to true uh, extremes, you know, our, um, our films uh, this year are, uh, let me just pull it up here. So 71% uh, of them are directed by women, 75% by people that are uh, BIPOC or AAPI and 33% by people from the LGBTQIA plus uh, community. And uh, 87 feature a, a female lead, 81% a person of color or Asian Pacific Islander lead, and 30% an LGBTQIA lead. So that blows away pretty much anybody's uh, uh, you know, statistics on, on representation. And, uh, and we do it all deliberately because there are that many great movies with those kinds of numbers that, that we can show. How can film festivals make sure diversity and representation aren't just like talk, like that they're really discovering new talent who might be locked out of Hollywood? Well, it takes very, very conscious effort. Um, I was in Australia a few years ago and um, doing a panel and uh, a, a woman told me that um, every year in Australia, they have this short film uh, festival, short film competition, and it's very popular and um, well-known many years. And every year, only about 17% of the films chosen to compete are directed by women. And so this one year, they decided, you know what, just for the heck of it, as an experiment, let's take the names of the directors off 
the films and just see if anything happens, 50-50. So these were intelligent, incredibly well-meaning people who were trying to be unbiased and they couldn't, couldn't do it unless the names were up. So it just shows you how much we have to contend with when we're trying to be unbiased. And so, hey, if that's what it takes, do it. You know, uh, you, it's, it's really tough to block your own unconscious biases unless you're really willing to take extreme steps to make sure that you do. 30 years on from Thelma and Louise, are you surprised how much things have changed or how little things have changed? Oh, a surprise how little, surprise how little has changed. Yeah, um, that was kind of the point of This Changes Everything, that documentary that I uh, executive produced. Um, because when, when Thelma and Louise came out, all the press was saying universally, this will change everything. Now we're gonna see so many movies with female leads, female buddy pictures, whatever. And, and Susan and I were like, hot dog, <laughs> that's great. We've ushered in a new era. Uh, I just wait for that to happen. Um, and uh, and it uh, profoundly didn't. Now, are things better in some ways 30 years later? Yes, but, uh, but not tremendously so. Um, I, I believe that the most change has happened in movies and TV made for kids because in the 15 years that we've been doing, uh, my institute has been working on that. We now have achieved parity in the lead characters in uh, movies made for kids and TV made for kids. Um, not the worlds, they're not by any means populated by half female characters. And we have a lot of you know, uh, progress still to be made with diversity, but, uh, but it, it shows that we're on the right track you know, to make a dramatic change like that. And, uh, uh, and I and I'm an incredible optimist. I do believe that we will be able to make this change, but I'm really tired of waiting for it uh, to happen. You know, people have to just make very conscious decisions to to change things. You know, there's a lot of talk in the industry now, like who should be telling whose story. Do yeah. you think in uh, like like uh, having um, a white male director on Thumb and Lee's was a drawback, or do you do you think a female director would have done a different or better job? I would say uh, that I don't think anybody could have done a better job than Ridley did. I mean, he did an extraordinary job. He understood it backwards and forwards. He made it beautiful and epic and, and he did an incredible job. And so when people say men shouldn't direct movies with women in them, I say, well, well but Ridley, uh, but, uh, and But then on the other side, I don't think we should limit women to only directing movies about women. Women should be able to obviously direct Hurt Locker and, and, uh, and anything they want. Um, and, uh, and it tends to be that women are, are sort of thought of, relegated to softer relationship movies and things. And, uh, and they, wanna, they wanna do everything, it's just like men wanna do everything. Um, so, uh, it's really, it's really just about expanding opportunities and, and figuring out the talent of the person. Can they do that project and not whether their gender is going to get in the way. Having said that, directors should be 50, 50. There should be half directors that are women in Hollywood. They just should. And, and then, and then everybody direct whatever the heck they want. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And thank you so much for all the work you're doing for getting, you know, female directors to not be stuck in that box of just directing, like you said, those softer movies. And I really appreciate what you're doing. And that documentary was incredible. And thank you so much for your time.